Hello, my name is Moses Wan, and in this particular video, we will cover the fundamentals of version control using Git. Let's start off with why we should use version control. The comic strip that you see comes from a website called phdcomics.com, and it illustrates perfectly what happens when you don't have some sort of version control system. This poor fella luckily only has to deal with a singular file, and only one other person in this transaction. Now, let's imagine if this is upscaled to hundreds of files. Now take that imaginative forward and upscale that again to a full team of engineers. For me, the words chaos and agony would come into mind when I think of this situation. Introducing Git. Git is a version control tool that will not only store multiple versions of your project, but also allows collaboration between multiple people on the same project at the same time. So how does it do this? Well, it starts off with a base copy of your files. Then every time you edit the document, it will record the differences between every line, as well as keeping track of all the deleted lines, as well as the newly added ones. Once you are ready to save it as the next version, Git will essentially take the file changes from your staging area and form a snapshot of your files called a commit. Then it will add it to the stack of snapshots known as a repository. This makes it easy to not only keep track of changes that are made throughout your project, but also we can turn back time if necessary to a previous commit. Let's say if there was a major bug in the current version, for example. Now that we know how Git can keep track of versions, how does it allow us to work collaboratively? Essentially, there are two types of repositories, the local repository and the remote repository. The remote repository is the repository which is stored on a server and is the global copy for all the team members to use and update from. The local repository is the team member's personal copy of that repository, which is stored on their computer. Essentially, the local repository is the team member's workspace where they can do their work, commit, and when they're ready, synchronize back with the remote repository. So let's say you're a new engineer on the team. A team already has an existing remote repository, and it is time for you to get working on the project. The first thing you will need to do is to clone the repository. This means to create a brand new local repository using the contents of the remote repository. Effectively, you are copying the remote repository onto your computer. Now you can start doing some work. As you are doing your work, Git will keep track of all your changes automatically. Now you think you're ready to show your team members the fruits of your labor. It is time to commit. The first thing you need to do is to pick and choose which changes do you want to save to your commit. Effectively, moving it into the staging area. Then you will get all the changes in the staging area and commit it, effectively forming a snapshot of your work. Your team thinks you've done a great job and wants you to move your changes to the remote repository. Before we update the remote repository, you want to see if there's anything new in the remote repository. You will need to pull down the remote repository to your local repository. Fingers crossed, hopefully nobody has updated the remote repository without telling you. If that is not the case, and you are indeed working with the latest commit from the remote repository, hooray! But if not, well, there is one more step you need to do. So this is what it looks like if you're not up to date with the latest commit on the remote repository. Basically, somebody beat you to committing their changes first. So what do we do? So when we pull down the remote repository, hopefully the changes don't affect your changes at all. Then Git can automatically merge the new changes together. But if Git finds that it isn't that easy to put together all the changes, Git will flag it as a conflict. When you have a conflict in Git, you will have to do the mixing and matching manually for which changes you want to move into the newest version. You can pick changes from the remote repository 
or changes from your local repository, or even both. So that's what we're going to do in this following diagram. Great! Everything is fixed and it's now time to synchronize to the remote repository with your brand new local repository. So we need to push up our local repository to the remote repository. And then that's it. You have now contributed to the project. Great work. The images from this particular video were sourced from git-scm.com as well as swcarpentry.github.io. So if you want more detailed explanations, try check out these particular sites.